after hours of sitting in custom practice in MLB The Show, I think I finally found it. The formula and why swings feel quick and why swings feel slow. I've made multiple videos on the channel these last couple years going through, taking a deep dive into MLB The Show. I've been trying to understand why certain swings feel quick while some swings feel slow. And after doing some studying and looking into the game, I think I finally found everything that compiles into the swings. I'm gonna go through and explain my findings, sit down, get comfortable, because this is scan analysis season, and let's get into it. So in case you are newer to MLB The Show and have just hopped onto the game this year, and kind of are confused by what I mean by all of these things with swings, let me explain that first. One thing that you learn in MLB The Show is that there is something with comfort. Now there's some type of player types that maybe you do better with in comparison to others. There are a lot of different things that account for choosing players that people like. And the biggest thing is the swing. Now there are those players that you just have a really good vibe with their swing. Like some players you just naturally have a gauge of timing their swing well. For me, for example, over the last few weeks, I definitely learned that Eduardo Escobar is a swing that I really like. And I, something with this card, it just like really works well with me. Like my swing is butter with him. A lot of people probably feel this way about Cattell Marte. He's got a very popular swing in the game. These things follow so many trends. Like so many people do well with these cards. I think it's more than just a personal preference thing. I think there is a common thing that people like in a large majority of cards in terms of swing timing. People usually like quicker swings. You'd rather have a card that has a quick swing because then you could hit those inside fastballs and sinkers earlier and not have to worry about being late on those because in this game, you face those type of pitchers a lot. There are a lot of inside pitches and you gotta be ready to hit inside. And if you're swinging with someone you're normally late with, that card may be less appealing because you get a lot of inside fastballs, you're not gonna hit the ball well at all. So I wanna go into the different factors that could affect swing timing. Some of them are actual things in game that are direct effects, while there are some things that I think are more subliminal things that come down to mental timing. So first, let's talk about the four components of swings. That's at least what I think it is. Four different things that all affect a swing. There is a strategy guide in the pause menu of the game. And this is where the devs literally explain some in-game mechanics and took a little bit of a deep dive on how certain things work. So first, I wanna talk about timing windows. You'll hear me say the term timing windows and what that means is basically the window that you have to get different timings of your swing. So you know on that bottom left corner of your game when it shows that swing pad and it goes from yellow to green to yellow and back to red, that is your timing window, your time that you have to swing the bat. And depending on when you swing in that timing window, will tell you if you're early, late, perfect, so on and so forth. There are actually factors in the game that affect this timing window. You would think every single pitch has the exact same timing window, but obviously that is not the case. First of all, you have different pitch speeds. You have where the pitch is located that changes the, the window, moving it forward or backward. For example, you gotta be earlier on an inside pitch than an outside pitch normally. And there are some basic in-game things like that that affect where this timing window is. So obviously this window is a thing that is always moving forward or backward. Everyone may have the same timing window. Like every player has to hit the swing button at the exact same time to get a perfect swing. However, I learned that there are in-game attributes that actually affect the size of this window, thus affecting what I think the timing of your swings. First, you have your hitter tendencies. So when you go into the pause menu and you see that a hitter is a push, pull or balanced hitter. These are tendencies kind of explaining where a hitter will normally hit the ball. So Altuve here, for example, is a pull hitter. He's gonna have a higher tendency of hitting the ball towards the left field side of the stadium in comparison to hitting it to right field. And how this is actually done in game, you'll see when we go into our hitting. So as you see this little paragraph, I'm not gonna sit here read the entire paragraph. You see that there are different hitting tendencies that cards have. In other words, for a pull hitter, the attribute slightly increases the timing window for early swings and slightly decreases the timing window for late swings. So what this means is on early swings, that timing window gets bigger. So in that early half of the timing window, it actually gets a little bigger with a pull hitter, while the latter half gets a little smaller. So essentially what it's doing is taking that timing window and moving it up. It's essentially what it's doing. It's moving it forward. 
It's not really moving the center, because perfect perfect I think is always the exact same timing. However, it's moving it up a little bit. They'll likely be on that earlier side of the ball with their swings more often. And I'll go into more detail on this in a moment. On this bottom paragraph you see, play vision is similar to contact, but focuses solely on strikeout components. The rate the batter puts the ball into play and his swing and miss rate. It suggests hitting components like your timing window, there's the word, turns borderline misses into fouls, and borderline fouls into balls into play. So the point of this vision, as you see here, higher vision players will make contact more often. And what this does is it takes that timing window and makes it bigger. So now the window is wider. So a player with a larger timing window, player with higher vision, you may see them get more just lates, just earlies, early side of good, late side of good, in comparison to someone with lower vision who may get more just blatant earlies and very earlies. So point is, we have some attributes and those tendencies actually affect the timing windows in the game. It affects the type of timing you're gonna see in the bottom left corner. And I think that is a part of the reason why a swing may feel quick or slow. Next, there are two more components that come down to visual. So in terms of a player and their swing, there are two main parts that I think are the largest factors for determining if a player's swing feels quick. First of all, a player's stride when they're hitting. So we'll look at Mike Piazza here, for example. His swing feels like it's a little bit slower than other players in the game. So you look at the motions here. This is his stride. When he steps his foot up in the swing and moves towards actually swinging in his full motion. This, I think, is a factor in terms of a player's swing feeling quick or slow. Mike Piazza here, for example, who I think is the perfect example of a player with a slow swing, has a very subtle stride. You see, he doesn't move his leg up much. Very late in the motion. You can't really see it here, but it's late in the pitcher's wind-up or stretch. Thus, you know, it feels like his swing starts later than other players. When you compare that to this, you see, you see his foot a lot more easily here in comparison to that, his leg kicks up a little bit more. So with someone like Mike Piazza, I feel like his stride partially messes with people. A player's height, I think, is a factor in a player's swing feeling quick or slow. And it might not be for the reason that you think. You would think maybe a taller player, maybe their swing is just longer in general, or a taller person, motion might take longer. But the thing that I feel with taller players, when you're hitting in game and you're hitting on strike zone one or strike zone two, and you're really zoomed into the plate, you're normally not gonna see players that are this tall, you're not gonna see their arms as easily, you're not gonna see their stride as easily, and they're so much bigger, they're a little bit further off the plate potentially, they're a little bit taller, so their arms are cut off off screen, so you don't have much to base off of. So players who are taller, who have very upright stances as well, players like this might feel slower in their swing for many people, because again, you're not gonna really see them swing. So guys like Judge, Frank Thomas, now, Carlos Stanton might feel slower to many people because you don't have much animation to base off of to get your mental timing down. The first example of what I want to look at is Mike Trout. Mike Trout has got one of the most favorite swings in the game. I think there are a few factors for it. What I did was I went into custom practice. I took all of Mike Trout's attributes, made them all 99, made the vision, discipline, bat and clutch, all these things the highest overall and kept them the exact same. But what I did change was the tendency. So what I did was I started off with whole field. And what I did basically was go into custom practice here and took a bunch of swings. I took a bunch of swings with whole field tendencies. I first tried to see that little timing window in the corner and see if that changed. But one thing I learned is that little window, the yellow green thing does not really move at all based on the tendencies. It stays the exact same. But I noticed with Trout, when it had whole field tendencies hit, he was spraying the ball everywhere. The ball was really going everywhere. Um, I wasn't super early on everything. I had a good variation of swings. So right now, he's got whole field tendencies on. And you'll see, when I'm taking swings, the ball will kind of go everywhere. I'll hit some early side of good swings to left field, hit some late side of good swings to right field. And remember, on the card's attributes, I changed it to whole field hitting. And I did a bunch of this testing on my own. And the things that I noticed was the whole field. You hit the ball kind of everywhere. High exit velos nearly anywhere in the field. But the point was 
the ball wasn't really going towards one side or the other too much. But what happened was when I went in here, changed him from whole field, and I did extreme pull, I found that I was on the early side of the ball literally all the time. Like on nearly all the swings, I was on that early side of the ball. Every swing was going to left field, basically with regularity. And especially the harder hit balls were to left field. When I did hit the ball to right field, it felt like I got a little bit more punished. So now you see when I get extreme pull on, I'll be a lot earlier on the ball on average here. You see our first swing is a very early. But you'll see like with extreme pull, I'm gonna be early on the ball. Be nearly every swing is gonna go to left field. You will see every swing will do it. And that bottom left timing window stays the exact same. It's not really moving forward or back or anything. It's just I'm ending up on the earlier side of swings far more often. And you see that one I was very late on. That's actually in just, just outside of the green. That one's a very late foul ball. See, I'll try to sit back on that one. That one's hit pretty hard. But you'll see only 101. When in here, I'm going to absolutely demolish that one. Basically squared up pretty similarly, 106. And then when I adjust this again and I move it from extreme pull to extreme opposite, you'll see the opposite type of thing will happen where the timing window will be moved back. I'll be actually on the later side of good a lot more often than I was because of the swing tendency, which is weird. I'm hitting X at virtually the same time. Like my mental timing isn't changing. It's just for some reason I'm ending up on that side of the timing window a lot more often it's very odd so you know you see extreme opposite all right here we go exact same circumstances extreme opposite field hitter so you see that one was an early well on the other timing window that type of swing output probably would have been like maybe just earlier honestly would have been a good but you see when i'm on the earlier side of the ball i'm getting early swings and i'm hitting the ball harder to right field see that was hit 105 for some reason, this card just ends up in this variation on that later side of good a lot more often. He's hitting the ball harder to the opposite field. And I'm not really changing my timing much. I'm really not. See, a perfect, perfect on that. That's a really good swing. So you see, with a, with an opposite field hitter, you kind of got to sit back on the ball a little bit more. I could still time up the ball and pull it and hit it hard, obviously. But you see, I find a lot more success and a lot more swings going towards right field. And I end up on that later side of timing a lot more often. And it feels like for me to really pull the ball, I got to be a little bit earlier than I would have before. Because again, this timing window is being moved to the other side. And a lot of these early swings are kind of choppers. So even though that's just early, it's not being hit really hard because since the timing window is being moved back, I think the swing is almost reading like a very early instead of adjust early. So it's kind of ending up as a chopper. But you see, all these swings are a lot more center field aligned going towards right field. They aren't going down the line as much. And only like diff weird instances, like you see, I'm not hitting the ball nearly the same with this trout as I was before. So the point I want to make, from what I understand of this and tendencies, I genuinely think now that tendencies definitely have an impact on a swing. So if you want a faster swing, you use someone who's got extreme pull tendencies. And the best way to check that again is when you're hitting with the card, going to the pause menu in DD. Like look for that little timing thing where I showed Altuve before. Next, I want to talk about vision. Because vision definitely also has a factor in your timing window. Remember when we went in the little strategy guide and it said that vision makes the timing window bigger. So what I did was I tested that as well. Don't worry. We didn't stop there. I took my trout and again, boosted up all of the attributes to 99. But the thing that I changed this time, instead of contact and power and the tendencies and all that, the only thing I changed was the vision. So what I did was I started off, I took a bunch of swings with 99 vision Mike trout. So I wanted to get a vibe for his swing on this. And one thing you will notice when I'm in game, I'm gonna square up a lot of swings, a lot more of the swings will end up towards that middle timing. I'll get a lot of early side of good, late side of good. A lot more swings will end up that way. And then when I turn that vision down, you'll notice the opposite effect will happen. I'll have a lot more extreme timing and I'll end up very early, and very late, a little bit more often. 
See, late side of good. Just early. Perfect. You'll notice I'll probably hit more perfects with higher vision. Like, it, it's a very weird thing, but I think higher vision also increases that perfect timing window. See, that was a late. That wasn't even like a very late. With lower vision, I guarantee that's a very late. But you see, all of these swings basically are right around good timing. I'm getting a lot more, like, pretty well-timed swings. So I'm finding myself in the green a little bit more. Now you'll see, I'm going to lower his vision to zero. So we have two extremes, 99 and zero vision. Now we'll move this down to zero. And when you play with a player with really low vision, the vibe feels completely different. Like the card feels completely different. The type of contact I'm making feels completely different. Obviously players don't have zero vision and this is very dramatic. But the difference between someone with low vision and high vision, completely different ball game. Partially because that timing window, and you'll just see with how I square up the ball, it'll be a different game. I'll still get perfect perfects. I'll still square up the ball and be in pretty good timing. But we'll have a little bit more extreme timing, you'll see. Start off with a perfect perfect. There's an early side of good that we're pulling, by the way. A lot of our early side of goods were hit the center field with the higher vision. See, there's a very late. That would have definitely been a just late or late with the 99 vision. That was a late side of good hit the center, sheesh. There we go, swing and miss. See, I actually swung and missed. You see, I think the timing window is a lot tighter. See, look at that. I'm actually hitting it to right field. And that one was foul. See what I mean? Like we're hitting the ball a lot more directions. We're hitting it foul. We're getting a lot more extreme timing on our swings. We're not squaring it up as often. But you see with lower vision, I'm hitting the ball hard, of course. But we're not getting as many perfect perfects. The ball's going to all fields. And it feels like that window is tighter because the ball is... So point is, players with lower vision, I think their swings feel quicker because you end up in more extreme timing. So Trout with like 50-something vision, for example, on his normal card, his swing may feel quicker because he's getting a little bit more earlies and very earlies. He's getting more extreme timing. While someone with higher vision, the timing window is so wide, you may just have a little bit of an earlier side of good. So if you're trying to be earlier on the ball, it feels like you're swinging later with Clemente, who has got like 125 vision, whatever vision he has, because he's getting a just early or an early side of good. Well, if you were to swing at that exact same time with Trout, you may have a very early, an entire swing and miss. So I think that is also a factor in why some swings feel quicker. And then finally, we got to talk about the stride and the player height. I think with the stride of a swing, when you could see that players kick very visibly and they start that kick very early in the pitch, players like Eduardo Escobar, Mike Trout, Trey Turner, Cedric Mullins have very visible strides in their swings and they're usually pretty early on in the pitcher's motion, is you're mentally dialing up a little bit more because you're seeing that stride happen early. Mike Piazza, for example, doesn't have that much that makes him a, a slower swing. He does have balance hitting tendencies. And he does have a little bit higher vision on his cards normally. However, his stride is subtle. You don't see it much. So I find that many people's mental timing might be a little bit later on that. And then with the player's height and how tall a player is, like I mentioned before, taller players are players who are very upright in their stance. They may end up feeling slower in their swing. Not everyone feels this way, but a lot of people may feel slow with Frank Thomas because, again, this man is a unit of a dude. This man is how tall? 6'5"? Very tall. 6'5 is pretty tall in this game. He got a very upright stance, so you maybe see his elbow. So his swing might feel slow because of his height. It's at least a small component of a swing. Now that we've gone through the four pieces and why I think these things affect swings, let's go through some examples of players in this game and try to understand why their swings may feel fast or slow pretty usually on this game. So let's talk about the notorious slow swing himself, Mike Piazza. First, the hitting tendency. This card, his cards usually get balanced hitting. So, you know, balance is not bad. It just does balanced hitters don't have extreme pull tendencies, so he may not be on that earlier side of the ball as often because, again, he doesn't have that 
extreme pull tendency. Then his vision. This card has 85 vision, which is actually pretty good at this point in the game in comparison to our other cards. A lot of live series cards and such have, you know, sub 75 vision. So Mike Piazza having 80 vision is about middle of the road. His stride, like I mentioned before, we'll look at his card for the sake of it. Mike Piazza has a very subtle and slow stride. His swing is very, his stride is very minor and subtle, and it just doesn't really feel great. And in his height, he's pretty upright with his stance, which I think is a factor, but I don't think the height is a big factor with Piazza. So what we'll do, let's actually take Piazza, and I'm gonna prove exactly what we could change with Piazza to make his swing feel quicker. Let's go to roster control. We're gonna put him on the Mets, and we'll take some swings with Piazza, because like I said, Piazza's swing feels pretty slow, let me illustrate what I mean by a slow swing. All right, so here we go. Let's just take some swings with Piazza. Let's just see our timings. There's an early that's hit foul. Apparently, I'm early-ish on the ball right now. There we go. Hit one to center field on early side of good. So you see, with, with cards with balanced tendencies, you definitely can pull the ball. But with Piazza here, I think his swing, you know, you'll see I'll end up on the later side of the ball. We'll really illustrate this with some inside fastballs. But now when we start to get inside fastballs into play, it's tough. It's tough to actually feel like you can be early enough on an inside fastball. Again, I think a part of it is his motion. You see, I'm ending up on the late side of good on these swings. A little bit later on the ball. These are 92 mile per hour fastballs. And it feels like with swings like this, it's very difficult to be on that earlier side of the ball and turn on inside pitches. That's why people don't really like someone like Piazza too much. It's it, it's tough to get the timing down. Late side of good on an inside pitch. So that is what makes a card like him feel like he has a slow swing. So yeah, I'm gonna prove what we can do to change Mike Piazza to make his swing quicker. It's actually the tendency. We'll start off with that. We'll only change his tendency and you'll see how much our timing is different. Attributes will change that from whole field to extreme pull. And you see here, extreme pull. All right, so let's do the exact same thing. We'll do Piazza against Nestor. We'll do inside four seams. And let's just see how much our timing changes here. Look at that. First swing, early. 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 That went on his late side of good. He got, he bamboozled me a little bit on that. Early. Early. And again, like, I'm not, like, really changing my swing timing. We didn't even touch his stance at all. The only thing we changed was his tendency. And look at all these swings. We had one late side of good swing. And that has been our latest swing so far. And this is genuinely something you feel. Like, you feel like with these tendencies, someone like Piazza swings suddenly doesn't feel as slow. He's on that earlier side of the ball basically all the time. I actually need to slow down a little bit to time up an inside pitch with them right now. And we just changed that. That's our only our second late side of good swing to try to improve on this a little bit more. I'll try to test this. I don't know if he'll actually do anything. Let's try to change Piazza's stride on his card. So he's got default swing here. I think he has swing two-handed swing type one. Yes. So you have two-handed swing one. And you see his stride, exact same. We're going to change that to style two, which you see the style two a little bit more visible. All right, back to our inside fastballs. Let's see what this looks like. This one is trippy because seeing Piazza actually do this motion doesn't seem natural. But yeah, it is indeed something he can do. That was the late side of good. But just look at these swings. Compare these swings to our very first swings we were taking. And some of you may think I'm like intentionally trying to time up the ball different or anything. I'm telling you, those timing windows move up. And now that I have his stride like this, I'll probably be earlier in the ball. Because again, it's a little bit more visible, his stride. Look at us. See, we're literally on the early side of everything here. The early side of everything. All right. So now that we did those two things, obviously Mike Piazza's height, we're not changing. And now we'll test the last thing, which is vision. And you'll see if we lower his vision a little bit, not that you intentionally want lower vision, because I think vision is valuable to have, but we'll lower it to like 65 vision. But his vision won't be as high. It'll be just a smidgen lower. And we'll have a little bit more extreme timing on his swings. We'll have a little bit more earlies. Super quick swing, Mike Piazza here. 
Very early. Ooh! Just early. You see, look at how quick this swing is. My man's got a butter swing. So you see, with these quick swings, we're ending up with more extreme timings because the lower vision. We're not getting as many early side of goods. We're getting more like earlies, just earlies. Just because of how these timing windows work. The timing window is shrunk with lower vision. So we end up with more extreme timing. And obviously, I don't think you want too quick of a swing. You want a good mix of vision, contact, and all that. High vision is valuable, especially for, you know, fouling off pitches and all that. But again, like, a swing feels quicker with lower vision. It's not actually really changing much. I think the tendencies are definitely the, the biggest factor of the bunch. But you see, look at, look at how much different those swings were from the first bunch. Just for the sake of science, we'll go back to the exact same stuff we had before with Piazza, and we will, we will make it exactly the same as it was before. I think the default roster should fix that. Now I'll put him on the Mets. All right, we got Nestor, Mike Piazza back to his normal self, inside fastballs. Let's see how we do. Okay, that one I was really early on. Okay, so apparently I'm locked in right now. There it is. We see a lot of these swings are ending up early side of good instead of like early, just early like we were for. Again, his swing feels slower because we're ending up right around that good region. Again, because of the vision. But we're more center with our timing here. We're not on that early side of everything now. Because again, the tendency. This is with other cards like Mike Schmidt with notoriously slow swings. And just say, we just made Mike Piazza, who has a normally very slow swing, into a lightning quick swing card. And I think we kind of understand now why swings feel quick or slow based on the stance and these attributes and tendencies. If you enjoyed this deep dive, make sure you like this video. This video took a lot of looking into the game and studying swings and attributes and all those things. And I always love videos like this. So make sure you sub to the channel. And if you guys actually enjoy something like this, I would love to actually make like a little bit of a rating for a card based on their swings. So we can compile things like their tendencies, vision, all these things that factor into a swing and give like a number rating on like how good their player's swing is. So when you're looking for cards, you know, if you want players with faster swings, then now you could actually look for players that have swings that are maybe a little bit faster than others. And if you're someone who is playing with a card and wondering why you're maybe late on everything with one card in comparison to one where you may be early on everything, you're not crazy. It's a part of the game and these are all the things that cause it. I appreciate you all watching and I'll see you all again on the next video tomorrow. Deuces.